Last Sunday, we began teaching uh, on the church and her mission. The church and her mission. Praise God. If we get that turned on and aimed this way just a little bit, please. The church and her mission. So last Sunday, we, we started out with the teaching along the lines of the church and her mission. The first thing we covered was what? Evangelism. The number one thing the church should be doing. The first and pri primary priority of the church is to evangelize. Right. To reach the lost. The reason we're here is to reach the lost. Can somebody say amen. Yes. And so last week we talk, talked about uh, how that evangelism was imperative to the kingdom of God. Evangelism is important. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me back up here. Let's read from Acts 2, 42 through 45, which was the, the uh, Acts 2, 42 through 45, our uh, foundation text for this teaching. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and good and parted them to all men as every man had need. So here we have what the church was doing in the beginning. Um, we know that they were going everywhere. Jesus commanded them when he, before he left to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Hallelujah. Amen. They'll cast out devils. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any other thing, it shall not harm them. They'll speak with new tongues. And they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And then Luke's gospel, I believe it is, says they went everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word. They went everywhere preaching the gospel, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. So we see that evangelism was an important and vital part of the early church. And that the church was involved in reaching out to the lost, preaching Jesus to the lost. <clears throat> I'll tell you, we're living in a time that we got to get busy about being preachers of the gospel. And it's not as, it's, it's not as easy as it used to be. Amen. I'm telling you, I mean, you're the venom and the vitriol that comes out of people against anything to do with the Bible. I, I saw on, um, on foxnews.com yesterday, this woman wrote an article, you know, Bible, sex, and my lesbian daughter. And she, her daughter, a couple years ago, came to her at 37 or 39 or whatever and, told, and left for her mama she was a lesbian. And it, over the process of time, she found out that God wasn't upset with her being a lesbian. She was upset with how she, how she uh, believed and reacted. And so she's come to understand that it's okay. She disagrees with one man with one woman, and she disagrees with, you know, that sex outside of marriage is fornication. She couldn't ask for a better daughter-in-law, and she couldn't ask for a better spouse for her daughter than the, her, her, her mate. They got married somewhere. And then people started writing about Paul was a hypocrite, and Paul was evil, and Paul was this, you know, and because you know, people start saying, well, the Bible says this. They, you know, they, the, 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 the hatred you can tell what spirit's behind it. It's so, it's, it's so full of, of demonic uh, hatred towards anything that has a standard of, of normality and rightness. Yeah. It's just, you know, and, and just, I mean, Paul was all kinds of stuff. Well, Paul, Paul uh, had revelation. You know, if you want to go to heaven, you know, I don't want to go to hell. Hallelujah. But, you know, uh, this wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, you, you expect stuff from outside the church. You all understand that, don't you? Right. You expect uh, from unsaved people who aren't interested in serving God uh, a reaction against people preaching the truth. Right. I'll, I'll be honest with you, right now, the, one of the biggest dangers is inside the church. Yeah, right. Go ahead. The, the, uh, the teachings that are going on now about, um, uh, about things is just is, is dangerous. There is coming, there has come an absolute attack on the authority and integrity of the written word of God from inside the church. Yeah. Yeah. Dangerous ground. Yeah. So, but in saying that, let's, get, let's get, kind of go back here just a little bit. Uh, the church must be busy about reaching the lost with the truth. You can't be ashamed of the truth. You can't go out and try to win the lost with some method that waters down the word of God, 
that even in cases will deny the word of God under the guise of cultural differences. Things were different at that time. They weren't really writing for God. They were writing their opinions. It's whatever you feel like doing God understands kind of thing. You're not going to win the loss that way. You don't, you know, you don't assume an amoralistic, uh, humanistic mindset to reach lost people. We have to go with the truth. Amen? Jesus said that you would know the truth and the truth would set you or make you free. Without the truth of his word, people can't be free. Why do you think Satan's attacking the written word? Because, we, you know, well, Jesus is the word and however he tells me I can live, that's how I'm supposed to live. That's, there, there's no standard there. Yeah. If you were not here Wednesday night, I encourage you to go, get, uh, go back and listen to it. Um, we covered some things. We may recover some of that again this morning, but I'll tell you, you need to hear what we said uh, concerning some of those things. So evangelism was the first thing, and I'm not going to re-preach last Sunday. Go back and listen to it. The second um, mission of the church, or, now listen, you understand, don't go getting all uptight saying, well, I believe this, this, that's not the second mission. Well, listen, these are, I'm just saying second because that's the second thing I have in my notes. Okay? If you want to put something else second, go ahead. I don't care. All right? But I'm preaching. And so for my sermon, it's second. Amen. All right? I don't want those dumb Mickey Mouse emails or letters or Facebook posts. <laughs> Fred Price said, don't send me no Mickey Mouse letter. I'm not going to read it. And if I look at your Facebook post, I might just delete it. I love that delete button. Hallelujah. <laughs> Click. All right, you're gone. Hallelujah. So you don't like criticism? Listen, I don't mind criticism. If, if criticism is constructive, that's fine. But I don't want some bozo writing some dumb mess that doesn't make a bit of sense, starting to use a bunch of long words to try to make them sound, sound smart, and all the while they're just denying the Word of God. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. So, the second thing the church does is unify the saints around the doctrine of the apostles. Hmm. Hallelujah, which is, the, which is the New Testament doctrine. We are to come into a harmony and a unity around the, the New Testament teachings. Amen. Amen. That went over big. Amen. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Right. right. We're going to have to come into harmony. We've got to be in harmony about things. We've got to be in unity about things. And the only way we can have unity is to have a basis of authority. We must have a, a standard that comes from somewhere. Well, the standard can't be how I feel today. Well, I believe it this way. Or I think the Lord showed me, well, wh well, where's that in the Bible? Well, I don't use the Bible because pe there are people who don't have Bibles in, in the world. And because they don't have Bibles, we just have to trust that God's on the inside of them and they get what they need. Anyway. And besides... I've seen more fruit out of people who don't have Bibles than those in the West who do have Bibles. That's one argument right now. You know, it's crazy stuff going on out there, folks. No, we are to come around the Word of God. The Word of God is to be preached. The Word of God is not just something you get out of space and have no, nothing to back it up. Now, let me say this. Um, in coming into this, I'm, I'm going to run over real quick in your Bibles. To um, Peter. <laughs> I know it's in Peter. I just read it. Second Peter three. Let's look down here. Now, I could read the entire chapter, and I, prob I probably need to. This is, this, we're going to establish some things. Right. We're going to establish the authority of God's Word. Amen. Because if we're going to tell you that we need to come in unity around the doctrine of the apostles, and that the apostles' writings are the Word of God, then we need to establish that. Where you can um, go to your Bible and say, hey, here's the proof. And then when Bozo comes along with dumb stuff, uh -huh. no, you're not in the last days, seducing, there'll be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
Hello? So listen, we're going to read this entire chapter. And uh, I'm about ready to come out of this coat. Good gracious. That's 2 Peter 3, 1 through 8, uh, uh, 3, 16, through 1 through 16. 18, actually. This second epistle I, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which are spoken unto you by the holy prophets and the commandment of us, the, the apostles, and the Lord and Savior. Of the Lord and Savior. Now stop there. What? Now Peter is given apostolic authority, run on this, to what they're writing. Do you have your pure mind to be, to be stirred up against that which was written by the holy prophets and us? The apostles of the Lord and Savior. So now Peter is saying that which we're writing, obviously by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, has authority in your life. As much authority as the writings of the Holy Prophets, which was accepted as canon in Scripture. Y'all hear you going home. Amen. Knowing this first, that, that, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Walking after their own lust. Ooh. I mean, we can't, see, listen. He said, well, it's not right to judge someone's motives. I'm not judging their motives. I'm judging their fruit. I'm judging what they're saying. They're coming along and saying, I've got a higher revelation. I walk in a revelation outside the Word of God. Let me understand it. Not, the Word of God is not going to speak to every single thing that, and every aspect of your life in verbatim. But the principles of the Word of God will, will speak to everything in your life. Yes. They may not tell you to pack up your bags and move to Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes. Amen. And so when God, and God, God, uh, God leads and begins to speak to your spirit about doing certain things, then we have a written principle that says we're being led by the Spirit. Let me say this. He'll never lead you contrary, contrawise or in contradiction to his written word. That's right. Amen. In other words, you can't, well, God's leading me to move to Timbuktu. Okay. But he's not leading you to go divorce your wife and go marry somebody else's husband. Yeah. Or wife. Or both. Oh. Of course, the day we're living in now, yeah, you ever know. <laughs> Listen to this. Walking after the own lust and saying... In other words, and this, and understand this, the principle here in this statement. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Let's stop there. The principle is the word of God said something, but it hasn't come to pass, so it's not true. It's not just the one promise he's speaking to. The principle is that the, the scoffers who are consumed by their own lust are, are ministering, are saying things out of their own lust, are saying, there's promises all in the word of God, but we've heard that all our life. That hadn't come to pass. So now they begin to challenge the authority of the word. <clears throat> For this they willingly, <clears throat> they mean well, this they are willingly ignorant of. <laughs> Woo! They are what? Willingly. 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 You cannot walk around saying as a Christian that the written word has no authority, that it's just a good book that you read, but that you live out of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. The written word doesn't, doesn't have authority. Because there's people in the world without Bibles. Then get your back end busy getting them one. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good. Amen. And stop giving them and giving. Listen, there's Bible schools in India and in Africa now that are teaching people the lack of the necessity of the written word. Because people don't have Bibles. Training them up to just live because Jesus is in them. That's all they need to know. And in this whole mess, universalism is going on, all kinds of stuff. Man never did fall. Jesus only came to make man part of the Godhead. Oh, it's crazy. It's lunacy. That's why you've got that. And listen, because there's no written, because they're not using the written word and teaching the people they don't have to have the written word, they can willingly be ignorant of. Yeah. These are people who are what? Scoffers walking after their own lust. What's their own lust? Power. By the, listen, for this they, are willing, willingly, uh, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that what then was was overflowed with water perished. 
But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, see, you got people walk around saying, everybody's saved. Well, what ungodly men are going to come under fire and perdition if everybody's saved? Christians, everybody's saved because Jesus came. That's what they're saying. Everybody's saved because Jesus came. Christians just have a special mission. Well, how can we have a mission if everybody's already saved? See, you know, the, 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 the double talk. Yeah. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Now, what's he talking about here? A day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day with the Lord. What's he talking about? Back over here. Where is the promise of his coming? In other words, the promises that God has made, you may think it's lasted, taking too long. You may think it's taking forever. You may think that it's not happening fast enough. There are promises that people say, we've heard that, we've heard that, we've heard that. And he says, don't be ignorant. Because with the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. In other words, God will bring his promises to pass. But, but, uh, but the Lord is not, what? Slack concerning his promises. <coughs> the way some men count slackness. But as long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, he's not willing that any should perish. But all should come to what? Okay. Why would you have to repent if you're already saved? Anyway. But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth shall show and the works that therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Listen to this question. Here's a statement. Listen to this. this I know on this. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation, that's, that's old English for lifestyle, or manner of living yes. and godliness. Whoa! Seeing this is going to happen, how should you be living? That's his question. Seeing that all this is going to happen, how should you be living? Things are going to be burned up. Judgment and perdition will come on the earth. And seeing that this is going to happen, how should you be living? In the way you live and in godliness. That's his question. But how should you be living? You know, Dad Hagen used to say this uh, years ago, um, because you know you get you get people get on extremes. People just love extremes. Amen. Yeah, I love to be extremely blessed. Well, you know, we can get we can get in extremes about being extremely blessed. You're right. You can get so caught up with being blessed, you forget about the lost. Amen. No, if you're if you're that blessed, you don't hogwash. I've seen people chase down. Extreme blessed teachings. All they want is to be blessed. They don't give a rip about somebody that's going to go die and go to hell. God's not pleased with that. I said God is not pleased with that. What good does it do you? Do you run around telling everybody you got a Cadillac with a diamond in the back, gangster white walls, TV antenna, grooving on the scene in your gangster sheen? <laughs> See, y'all remember that song? <laughs> Some of you thinking, Pastor, what are you talking about? <laughs> Don't go look it up on YouTube. Anyway. <laughs> but Peter, Peter says all this, and then says, if all this is going to happen, how should you be living? Oh, man. It's a challenge. But Dad used to say this. He used to say, plan like the Lord's not coming back for 50 years. In other words, don't go sell everything, go live up on the mountaintop and wait for the rapture. Yeah. Amen. But live Amen. like he's coming back any second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live like he's coming back any second. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Isn't that right? Amen. You, you make, now listen, when we say plan, we're talking about, you make plans for life. Plan on having children and grandchildren and, you know, I mean, you know, make plans to do this or do that. You know, I've heard people say, there's no need in getting married. Jesus is going to come out before I get married. Well, what if he doesn't, dummy? <laughs> You're sitting out there, you know, and you wait 20 years. There was a group of guys back at Raymond back in, in 76, 77, 78 era. And they were called Burr. Burr. Burr, B-U-R, group of men. I can call some of the names of the guys because they, they revealed who they were back then. Some of you would recognize the names. Bachelors until rapture. 
Every one of them are married. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Bachelors until right. They're so convinced Jesus will come back any second. They, be, they formed a pack. We we're going to stay bachelors until the rapture. Then, they, then Brother Hagin dealt with some stuff. They got a revelation that, that being married, if he who finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. And got him one. Amen. Good. Amen. Good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dissolve the burr club. Hallelujah. Look at this. How shall, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy manner of life and lifestyle and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens be on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. I know I have the word diligent in your Bible. That ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, in which some things are hard to be understood, in which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. The word rest, W-R-E-S-T, means to twist. Which we get our, probably get our word wrestling from, to twist. Listen to this. Get ready to underline something here. As they do also the other yes. scriptures. Yes. Unto their own destruction. What, what scriptures? He didn't say these scriptures. He said the other scriptures. Peter, as an apostle, gave apostolic recognition to the writings of Paul as scripture. Hello? As an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, as an apostle of the Lamb, as one of the twelve first dudes. Hello? As one of those guys, in his writing, and in his own writing, he gave authority to his own writings. Remember back up there in the early, uh, first verse or two, or, um, where he says... That you may be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Then he comes down to Paul's writing and says, Paul writes stuff that's hard to be understood, and they that are unstable and unlearned, twist them. As they do also the other scriptures. Peter gave apostolic authority and recognition to the writings of Paul as scripture. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And even, which is a bold point, but he did it, gave it to himself. Yeah. Amen. And listen, they do rest it to their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest also ye be led away with the air of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and now. And forever. So here we have Peter dedicating, dedicating a whole chapter to this, a whole path, you know, of, his, of his writing, the last third of his book, of his letter, giving apostolic authority and recognition of, of New Testament scripture. <coughs> I think, and people, you got people saying now that, you know, um, that when the New Testament guys preached, they didn't use scripture. They didn't have a Bible. How many times did you see it as it was written? Yeah. Or as it is written? Yeah. Right. Paul, oh, let's, let's, um, Paul wrote to Timothy and says, you've known the Holy Scripture since a child. Right. Mm -hmm. There is constant reference to the Scriptures in the Scriptures. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, and let's look from here back over in Timothy. Paul writes over in Timothy. We'll need to read the entire third chapter here also. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah. 
So now, now listen, I know sometimes we, get, we do this kind of thing. It's a little more laborious to lay the foundation, but you need a foundation. Yeah, good. With the stuff that's going on in the world today, you need a foundation of truth to combat the lies and deceptions of the devil. Yeah. That's why I want you to have your Bible. I want you to mark in your Bible. I want you to be able to go, well, I, I don't know where it is in my Bible because I but they had it up on the wall. No, you need to be able to turn to that page, and there's a mark there. It says, hey, th this says the Bible is Bible. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So here we are, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the entire chapter. And actually, we'll read down into the fourth verse of the fourth chapter. Okay? This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, now what did Peter say? That the scoffers will come. Amen? And those scoffers will be taken away with their own lust, and they're willingly ignorant of that the promises of God will come to pass. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unnatural, un I mean unthankful, un unholy, without natural affection. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that unnatural affection is man likes man and woman, I mean, man likes women and women like men, and that anything else is unnatural. Why? Because anything else is a death to a, to a race, to a species. If everybody in the human race was homosexual, we would have been all wiped out long before they could do in vitro fertilization. Right. Hello? We could have wiped out the entire human race. It's not natural. Truce breakers, false accusers. Boy, how about the litigation these days? People just make an accusation. They destroyed the campaign of Herman Cain just by making accusations. That's right. Now, I'm not saying I was for him, against him, thought he would be a great president, and bad president, and, and, new, and different president. But I'm saying that his campaign was destroyed because of accusations. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Boy, I'll tell you what. Let some Christian write something on a, some blog on, on the internet and see what happens. I'm telling you, the, the, the venom you can just go out there and say, you know, God loves the homosexual, but homosexuality is wrong. And then the venom comes out against them. Oh, it's, I mean, it's like, you could, just, you could just feel the demons behind it. Listen, uh, despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses... And these captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, uh, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But that, listen to what Paul says to Timothy here. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Now Paul's saying that what he's teaching is what? Is what? Come on now. Paul said that what he had written and said was what? Doctrine. Amen? Peter, Peter says Paul's writings of Scripture. He says, you know my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, they're going to line that one too. That's not a shout in Scripture. But I'm telling you, church, you better get ready. And you better not get your feet put where your head was two seconds before because persecution showed up. And you're going, I tell you, if I was a, a tongue talker and word of faith person, I wouldn't have any troubles. Whoever told you that? I ain't never said it. I know that's horrible English. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't ever said that. And you ain't never going to hear me say it either. <laughs> Hallelujah. But evil men and seducers shall work wax worse and worse, deceiving 
and being deceived. Now let me say this. The worst deception there is is self-deception. When you, when you reject the weight of Scripture to stand on one Scripture to pr pr propagate and expand your belief and reject the weight of other Scripture, you're in, you're in the process of the self-deception. There are people right now who you can give them Scripture after Scripture after Scripture about, you know, um, that, that as Christians we're supposed to do certain things, that, that what we do does matter, it does bear. And boy, they were totally rejected because they, they've just la latched on to grace. You can't, you can't even talk to them about anything else. There, I mean, and now it's gone exactly where we said it would go. We, I, you, could, you could see it coming. Now it's moving into universalism. Everybody's saved. Because it's not based on works. Jesus went and paid the price. And he did it for And God's not willing that any should perish. God's not willing that any should perish. Yeah, that's true. But there are going to be people, people who perish. Jesus said they would. Are you here? Amen. I mean, the book of Revelation says that the hell will give up its dead. Whose ever name was not found in the Lamb's book of life. And they'll be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Are you here? If that weren't so, if everybody was already saved, they would, then Jesus would have said in the book of Revelation, would have said, well, you know, everybody's saved. There's nobody in the lake of fire. Nobody's going into the second death, just Satan and his angels. And, there's a, and if you don't, don't watch out, I guarantee you, eventually somebody will come out and say the devil's been saved. Yeah. God's a God of love. A God of love could never send anybody to hell, not even Satan. I'm telling you, these are the things that are going on. Evil men shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You just can't look at everybody and say they have pure motives. I don't believe everybody has pure motives. Right. I, now, I do believe that the people who've been deceived, that the motive is right, but they've been deceived mm -hmm. yeah. by those who don't have pure motives. Are you here? But I don't believe everybody has pure motives. Because the Bible says they don't. Peter said they're willingly ignorant of these things. Hmm. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and have been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Listen what Paul says in his doctrine. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Don't read on. Don't read on. Wow. Paul, see, so you got people going around saying now that you don't even, you know, people don't even need to read the Bible. They just, Jesus re reveals himself to them. They get saved. He moves in, and they live out of the Jesus in them. They don't even need a Bible. There's just a need for a Bible. Paul said they were, the scriptures, were able to make you wise unto salvation in Christ Jesus. Hello? When they preached in the day of Pentecost, if they quoted the Bible, they quoted Scripture. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Mm -hmm. And they got saved. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I said this Wednesday, but I, I like the fact that the, the New Testament just doesn't use the, the, the term, the Word, everywhere for the Scriptures. Because people come on and say, well, see, Jesus is the Logos, and that's all you need. God's smarter than dummies. Amen. He's smarter than the devil. And so he inspired the writer to use different terminology like the scriptures. Why? So you can't go along and say, Jesus is the Logos. That's all you need is the, is the Logos. He's the living Logos. That's all we need. Yet the, the, word, the, the word says we need the scriptures. So Paul says, you, everything you, I've known you from a holy child. The things that you've known and, uh, and the holy scriptures. And from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16. All Scripture, not all word, all Scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Anybody who teaches that we don't really need the Bible is teaching contrary to what Paul said, that the word, all Scripture is profitable. Amen. For doctrine. I get my doctrine straight from Jesus. Well, I get mine from the Bible. 
for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. Now, another translation says this last phrase differently, and I thought, wow. I believe the NIV, and maybe some others say it but this way, but it says, instead of instruction for righteousness, it says for teaching on right living. Yeah. You don't teach people how to live right. That's works. That's law. The scripture is profitable to teach people how to live. Y'all hear you go home. Now let me, let me just let me just knock universalism in the head right off the bat. If universalism, everybody saved always had automatically saved because Jesus came and died on the cross, was raised from the dead, everybody saved automatically. Then the moment that Jesus was raised from the dead, we should have had the rapture of the church, taking everybody out of hell, got them all saved, and all come back down from the millennial reign of Christ because it was all done, everybody was saved. It's it's hogwash. Listen, so all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now remember, Peter refers to Paul's writing as Scripture. Peter equates his writing to that of the Holy Prophets. Scripture. Amen? Amen. So all Scripture is given by God, inspiration of God. It's proper for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, or how to live right. That the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly furnished, Unto all good works. The importance of the scripture is to thoroughly furnish you unto all good works. Amen. That tells me without it you can't be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I know people who live better than the Westerners do. I don't care what you know. I know what the Bible says. That I need the scriptures to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. amen. Said amen. amen. And, and I and I I, I question because I, I read that to my wife. I said, you know, this, this person saying, you know, that I know people who don't have Bibles live better, more productive lives than Western Christians do. I said, what are they basing that on? What do you judge their more productive, better life on if you don't believe in the Bible? Yeah. What's your standard? Because there can't be a standard because you don't have, believe in the standard. Hello? Amen. I've seen people who say, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, and they go out and rob banks. I knew a guy was in a church I used to, I, I, I'm aware of. He was on staff as a deacon. One day went out and went down the road and some guy's hitchhiking and offered him some weed. And he's, had a, he's going through a difficult time in life. He actually took it. He, he used to be hooked on uh, some different drugs before he got saved. He started smoking the weed. Next thing he was on crack. Next thing you know, all of a sudden stuff at the church started disappearing. He, I love the Lord They're on the front row worshiping Jesus. Yes. See, you, what's your standard? What do you base it on? They, they walk around and say, I love Jesus. Let him who steal, steal no more. Right. Yeah. You're going back to thieving. You're not living right. Amen. I don't care. You can't say, you can't claim I'm under grace. No. You're not living right. Amen. Well, they had video camera. And actually... Uh, put in a video camera to catch it. Didn't tell, didn't tell anybody on the staff. Just told them, you know, because they knew somebody had a key. They were getting in with a key and they knew the password to the alarm system. <laughs> put in a video camera, caught this guy. And the, I mean, the pastor was just devastated. Uh -huh. Hey, what do you do? You got one of your leaders, one of the guys you trusted in, one of the guys you believed in getting, they got a key to church. And you, and you see, now he didn't press charges against him. Mm. Wanted to help him, love on him. Um, and I, you know, and, and I can't argue. Well, I mean, anyway. Sometimes we think what is love is not love. Amen. It's more damaging than helpful. So um, he ended up getting worse. Went over to another town near that place, about 10, 15 miles away, and robbed a church in the daylight and shot the pastor. And the whole time, begging the man to pray for him, saying, I'm a minister. Pray for him, please pray for him, please. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean about the drugs. Now, I say that because you can't go around and say, but people don't have Bibles. You, know, you, you just can't come up with some arbitrary rule of what's productive and fruitful. 
<coughs> what's, what's fruitful is measuring your life against the Word of God. Amen. 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 Trust in the Holy Spirit to empower you through the grace of God to live that way. Yeah. But you got there's got to be a standard somewhere that says this is how you're supposed to live. Right. Notice it said that, you know, because <coughs> you can have somebody going, I've got a revelation, I don't have to obey my parents. Well, yeah, we'll say that in my house, pal. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus showed me that I'm my own man, I'm my own woman, I don't have to obey my mom and dad. But you know what the Bible says? Children, obey your parents and Lord, for this is the first commandment we promise, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. Here, uh, in, in this passage, or, or, or yeah, I believe this passage, it says be that children will be disobedient to parents was a sign of evil things going on in the last days. Right. Hello? Amen. Oh my, 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 my. We're, we're, we're just really meddling, aren't we? I charge thee, chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Yeah. Preach the word. Yeah. Preach the word. Yeah. Preach the word. Be instant or prepared. In season, out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. How doctrine? Where are you going to get your doctrine from? Paul said his was doctrine. Peter said Paul's writings were scripture. All scripture is profit for doctrine. You're going to have to use the word to reprove and rebuke and exhort people. Yeah. Not come out and tell them you're under grace. It doesn't matter what you do. Any effort to live a certain way is works, and that's not grace. I mean, I need to get me a Rod Sterling set. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. Fruitcake Christians. Preach the Word! Hallelujah! Preach the Word! Glory to God! Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Amen. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears from such turn away, uh, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Wow. I said, Wow. T.L. Osborne used to say, say that backwards. Wow. Okay, that went over real big. Some of you don't know. Who's T.L. Osborne? Okay, well, anyway, forget it. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but will heap unto themselves teachers. Listen. We're talking about people who are out teaching. Yeah. Under the guise of teaching Christianity. Mm. Having itching ears. Listen to this. But what was the motive? By, but, but, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers. There are teachings that people will pursue after in order to heap after their own lust so that they can get away with whatever they want to do. Their lust is driving them. Not a desire to learn the things of God. Not a desire to honor and to please God. Not a desire to be productive for God. But a desire out of their own lust. They go find teachers that give them what they want and they turn away from the truth unto fables. Wow. Sounds good. It's appealing. It 
So it's appealing. Mm -hmm. Church, we don't pursue what's appealing. Remember what Jesus said about the comforter when he would come? He would guide you and teach you all things which I have commanded you. In following the Holy Ghost, we don't pursue what's appealing. We pursue and follow after the teacher. Amen. Amen. And the teacher is going to teach you stuff you don't like. Some stuff's not going to be appealing. But it's necessary. That went over big. I said that went over real big. The word of God. So remember, the, the second mission of the church is that to, the people are to unify around the doctrine of the, of the apostles. And we've got to get churches, and our church needs to be, our church needs to be strong in this area. Yeah. You don't need to be moved or shaken because something came and was a little whatever and it tickled your fancy. Here, here notice here, back in verse 3. So the time will come when they will not, underline will not, endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, what drove them to heap teachers to them having itching ears what drove them to that their own lust they rejected sound doctrine because of their lust and there are people out there willing to tell you whatever you want to hear because there's one thing thereafter. And this one thing really goes hand in hand. Money, which is power. Yeah. The love of money is the root of all evil. You got people teaching stuff for the purpose of gathering a following, for the purpose of having money, and they don't give a rip what it does to your life. All they want to do is minister to your lust so they capture and deceive you into supporting and following them. I'll tell you what, if you don't like what we preach here, there's, God, there's other churches. Go find some other church. Go find a good pastor that feeds and ministers to you. Amen. Amen. So pastor, if everybody leaves, Janie and I and Nathan, I can't say the girls are in Tulsa. Janie and I and Nathan will come to church. And if we have to pack it up to some hotel, we'll go to a hotel. We'll just do what we got to do. Amen. You're not in captivity here. Amen. You're not in bondage here. You're free Amen. to follow the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to run anybody off. We love you. But don't ever think you've got to come here because Pastor Ed's got some hold over you. And if you leave here, you're going to hell. <laughs> Sheesh. Give me a break. No, 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 no. Amen. People want, people are trying to get, to deceive people. We're not trying to deceive you. We're trying to get you set free. I want you free. Jesus said you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Lies won't set you free. Lies will bring you into captivity. Lies will bring you into bondage. Lies will destroy your life. Are you here? Lies will put you on the spiritual uh, junk heap. Oh, but the Word of God, hallelujah. I said the Word of God, glory to God, will set you free. The Word of God will heal your body. The Word of God will deliver your mind, praise God. The Word of God will fix your finances, praise God. The Word of God will sick, fix your marriage, hallelujah. The Word of God will promote you, praise God. The Word of God will lift you up. Glory to God. Because it's the truth. We're doing everything we know to do to get the truth to you, to get you free. Amen. To get you walking in the light as he's in the light. Amen. To have you in a, in a place where you can live victoriously. 
Amen? Amen? Not deceiving you. Oh, the bondage of deception. I said the bondage of deception. And, and, and not only that, the bondage that's in deception will shipwreck you. I've seen people shipwreck. I've seen people get deceived by doctrines and totally fall out and not even serving God. Because they had a revelation outside the Word of God. Somebody's teaching a revelation. It sells books and it sells tapes. I'll tell you what, people got ticked off with Dad Hagen for writing the Midas, Midas Touch. There's a lot of people who just turned him off after he wrote the Midas Touch. Yeah? Go read it again. There's a, yeah, listen, there's a lot of people who are not walking in biblical prosperity, not because God doesn't want to walk in biblical prosperity, but they followed after wrong teaching about biblical prosperity. And when correction came, they rejected it. Hello? Amen. There is no thousandfold anointing for this service. Yeah. Hello? Amen. I'm going to stuff money in the preacher's pocket. I, I, it bugs me when only certain, listen, it's like a multi-level marketing thing. Yeah. When only people at the top are getting rich, there's something wrong with it. Amen. Amen. If only the preachers are getting rich, there's something wrong with it. That's right. The people should be getting rich. Amen. If it's biblical, the people should be prospering. The people should be walking in a different place. Amen. Amen. That went ever big. Come on. No, it's good. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going Now last week I was informed I preached an hour and ten minutes. Amen. I don't know the last time I preached an hour and ten minutes. But I'm having fun. Yeah. Amen. And I use two references in this whole point of, the, of following the doctrine of the, of the apostles. <laughs> so praise God. I don't know if we'll just, you know. But just to understand that if we do not lay a foundation of the authority of the Word of God, how are we going to tell you you've got to follow that doctrine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got to be convinced the Word of God is, is, is the authority. Yeah, right, right. Amen. amen. I said amen. Amen. People are saying, I'm telling you people. Well, say, you Pastor, you've seen it on the internet. Hey, listen, it won't take long. It'll be everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be people teaching it everywhere. Now, what, two years ago, we taught, we taught on grace, what it is, what it isn't. And within two years, it's everywhere. Right. How many of you were ready when it came? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, this other stuff's coming. It's a coming. And, and sa listen, understand, Satan is after the Word of God in your life for a reason. Yeah. Without faith it's impossible to please him, for they that come to him must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Romans ten seventeen says, So then faith cometh. Yeah, boy. Faith cometh. <laughs> faith cometh <laughs> by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So if you can't if, if you take the Bible away, then the word of God's not coming, faith's not coming. If you don't have faith, you can't please God. There it is. Right. Satan doesn't want you to please God. Amen. I said, Satan doesn't want you to please God. He, Satan wants you, listen to me now, you and every other Christian on the planet to become Cain's instead of Abel's. Amen. I'm let you think on it for a second there. Boom, boom. Satan wants you to become Cain's instead of Abel's. The Bible says that Abel, through faith, offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Why was it Cain's in faith? Because it wasn't what he was told to do. Amen. Hello. Yeah, but he grew vegetables. He could have bartered those vegetables and crops out for, for, a, for a blood sacrifice with his brother. But he, his pride wouldn't let him do it. He came and offered his sacrifice. And the, Satan wants to get people offering what they think is okay. That Satan wants us to be Cain's instead of Abel and submitting to what God's Word says. 
and living by faith and pleasing him according to what his word says. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. If it's not according to the word, it's not faith. Can't be. I said it can't be. Because faith comes by the word of God. Hearing the word of God. If you don't, if it's not of the word of God, it's not faith. It's man. And the Bible says, Hebrews eleven six. 6, without, turn there, look at it. Turn to your Bible. I'm going to be like Doug Jones. Don't you, don't you close up on me. I've been here long enough not for you not to close up on me, as he tells the students. Bell rings, they start closing up. He said, hey, don't you close up and roll up on me. I've been here long enough. You might close up on these other people, but you don't close up on me. I thought, that's good, Brother Doug. I'll use it on my church. I've been here long enough. There's not a person in this room this morning that's been here longer than me. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's what? It's what? Come on now. It's what? Impossible to do what? Please him or God. For they that cometh to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently... Well, there's that word again. Yeah. Woo! Diligently. <laughs> that requires effort. Yeah. Oh, but I'm under grace. Fan me and give me a grape. No, diligently seek him. Well, how do we seek God? Now we pray. But I'm going to take the number one way to seek God is to meditate in his word. Spend time in his word. And then fellowship with him around his word. Let him speak to you out of his word, about his word. Mm -hmm. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible. He didn't say it was unlikely or difficult. Are you here? He said without faith, it's impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Everybody say, wow. wow. Now say it backwards. Wow. wow. You messed up your camera, didn't you? Got right in on that camera. <laughs> I am the camera. I am the image on the camera. Probably have my eyeball in there. Hallelujah. Satan is trying to use deception in the church and get people to believe the authority of the Word of God is not there, that the written Word is not necessary, that just an inward revelation from Christ is all you need because he wants to turn the church into a bunch of canes. Instead of Abel's. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't want to be a cane. I said, I don't want to be, I don't want to be of the spirit of Cain. Amen? I want to have a right spirit. I want to be after Abel. I want to please God. I want to bring sacrifices that please God. Somebody say amen. amen. If you can't say amen, say oh me. If you can't say amen or oh me, just say ouch. Amen. 